So Core Framework have released 1.8 in beta format. So don't use this on a live site, but it has brought with it a couple of key new features that I think are definitely worth highlighting. Now for a full breakdown of everything that's included, things I'm not gonna cover in this video, I would recommend taking a look at the change log, which I'll link in the description down below, and also the video that Luke released a couple of days ago, covering the additional things in a little bit more detail. So let's take a look at what is new and what is noteworthy for you as a Core Framework user. So first up, let's come into the editor itself. And inside here, you'll see we've got a new entry called fonts. And if we open that up, it's very simple. We can do two things here. We can import Google fonts and we can store them locally, which is the key thing here. We do want to store them locally or we can import local fonts. So we can upload fonts ourselves that we've downloaded. Let's take a quick look at the Google font option. So let's say we want to import a Google font. You'll see this brings us into a very simple editor where we can search for the font that we want to find and then set up a few other options. So let's go and search for something. Let's say we want to try Open Sans. There's our Open Sans. It tells us it's a sans serif font. We'll select that from the list. And you'll see now we have some additional options. One of the key and most important things here is we can pick and choose what variations of the font we want to install. So for me personally, I tend to sort of stick to three or four variations for different weights. So maybe a medium, a bold, a bolder, those kinds of things. So we've got our normal body text, headlines, and so on. You can do just that. So for example, we'll say we don't want this. We don't want to have the 500. We don't want to have the 700. We don't care about italics, so we can simply uncheck those options from here. And you'll see now we've got a very simple setup. We can choose then font display where this is auto block and so on. So we can choose some options from there. We'll leave this set to auto. Your font title, so if you want to change the name of this to something else, you can do that here. And if you want to apply a custom selector that'll work inside your builder and available inside Core Framework, you can drop that inside here. And the same thing goes then if you want to create a custom variable for this particular typography. For this example, I'm going to leave it as it is. We can hit the CSS preview if we want to. We can see exactly what's going to be imported into our CSS file, how it's going to be formatted, and all those kinds of good things. So once we're happy with all that, we can simply close that, click on Add Font. We'll hit Save Changes. And then you can repeat that process if you want to add more fonts in. We'll take a quick look at this in the actual builder itself at a moment. But let's say you want to import a local font. You can choose the option from here. Then you can choose the file you want to upload. You can see that now brings in the title, which we can change if we want to. Let's put a capital letter at the beginning there so it looks a little bit better. Then you've got the option for what variants are available. In this example, there's only one. But if you had more, you can choose which one you want to actually install in the same way we saw with the Google fonts. You'll notice we don't get the options, though, for CSS variables and so on inside you. Again, we can do a CSS preview, see exactly what's going to happen. And if we're happy, we can say add font. Again, we can hit the save changes, but you see this now shows us all the fonts that we have. We'll hit save. Now, if we go into our builder and open up our theme styles for any page, if we come into our typography inside here, now you can see, let's go for body text, for example. If we open this up, you can see we can open this. There's our custom fonts, which are core framework. There's the custom fonts that I've used. And then underneath, you see the standard fonts. So what we're doing is we're bypassing Google fonts because I've disabled that option inside the settings in Bricks itself. I'm sure you can do the same inside Oxygen. So we're not installing anything from the Google servers. They're all stored locally, which means we don't have to worry about things like GDPR compliance. Always a good thing. Still now available. So all we need to do is simply choose the one we want. So for example, this Gluck one and job done. We are set up and all good to go. Just hit save and we can use it anywhere inside of our site design. The next option that I think is definitely worth looking at is the fact that with Core Framework 1.8, we can do BEM naming directly inside the editor. Again, this is an oxygen and a bricks feature. So we've got a simple card set up here where I've got some placeholder information and there are no classes applied to any of this. So we want to follow BEM naming, which is block element modifier. I've got a video covering this if you want to check that out in the description down below to get up to speed. But basically what this is, is a naming convention, this kind of industry standard. And this just allows us to do it directly inside the editor itself. I use Advanced Thema to do this, but the fact that if you don't use Advanced Thema or use an Oxygen, for example, you can still do the same thing using Core Framework, I think it's a nice little addition. Unfortunately, you can see there's a little bit of a glitch here where we've got the sort of trash can icon. You'll see we've got the Ad BEM classes, which is the Core Framework logo. So I think that needs to be 
rectify in the final version so we don't have overlapping icons. But once we click on this, you'll see this now shows us the BEM class generator. So what we've got here is we've got the card test, which is the block, the parent, as it were. You can see there's the name. It's picked it up from what we've called it. Then underneath, we've got the element version of this. So the card test, the block, the image, the element. So we've got card test heading, card test image, card test text basic. All we need to do is click apply those classes if we're happy. Now, if we take a look, card test has a class called card test. Card test double underscore image, double underscore heading, and finally double underscore basic text. So we've now applied BEM naming to this so we can start applying to these classes and we've got a nice structured way of working. So I say having this directly inside Core Framework is just another little nice to have feature. So the final thing I want to quickly touch upon is a just a simple little option inside the editor itself in Core Framework. You may want to hide these various different sections like your brand, your background, and so on. Well, now if we come into the Manage Project option, you'll see each of these has a little eye icon next to it. So we can simply click on any of these to disable them inside the editor. Doesn't remove them, just hides them. So we've disabled these three. If we go back into our colors, you can see it's disabled those options. And if we want to re-enable them, we can click and re-enable them. It's a simple little option, but it kind of streamlines things. If you have a very, very busy setup inside you with maybe tons and tons of options in each of these sections, it's a quick and easy way of being able to just tidy this up and just get rid of some of that clutter while you're editing other things. Now, none of these are game-changing functions, but they are a nice little quality of life enhancements that if you don't have tools that already do things like BAM naming and so on, it does make life a little quicker and easier. So always a good thing. So I'm looking forward to when 1.8 is released to get access to some of these new features, especially the font uploading, until we get Bricks version 2.0, where we have better font handling. This is a nice, easy way we're to do just that inside Bricks. And obviously, if you're not using Bricks, you get access to these functions as well. So what are your thoughts on on these new updates? Are they things that you are looking forward to using or are they a bit of a sort of something and nothing? Let me know in the comment section down below. And if you want to learn more about working with Core Framework, you can check out this video next. As always, my name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts and until next time, take care.